like a bell cut. Someone worth talking to. Alice was so astonished that she could not speak for a minute. And can all the flowers talk? As well as you can, and a good deal louder. It isn't manners for us to begin, you know. And I really was wondering when you'd speak. I said to myself. Her face has got some sense in it, though it's not a clever one. Still, you're the right color, and that goes a long way. I don't care about the color. If only her petals curled up a little more, she'd be all right. Alice didn't like being criticized, so she began asking questions. Aren't you frightened that you are planted here and there's no one to take care of you? There's the tree in the middle. What else is it good for? But what could it do if any danger came? It says "bow wow." That's why its branches are called boughs. Didn't you know that? They all began shouting together till the air seemed quite full of sh little shrill voices. Silence, every one of you. They know I can't get at them. That's why they are talking so loudly. Never mind. If you don't hold your tongues, I'll pick you. There was a silence in a moment, and several of the pink daisies turned white. That's right. The daisies are worst of all. When one speaks, they all begin together, and it's enough to make one wither to hear the way they go on. How is it you can all talk so nicely? Alice said, hoping to get it into a better temper by a compliment. I've been in many gardens before, but none of the flowers could talk. Put your hand down and feel the ground. It's very hard, but I don't see what that has to do with it. In most gardens, they make the beds too. The, if the beds are soft, all the flowers are asleep, and if it is hard, then they are not asleep. Our bed is hard, so we are unable to sleep, and we are always awake. This sounds a very good reason. I never thought about that. It's my opinion that you never think at all. I never saw anybody that looked stupid. <gasps> a violet said so suddenly that Alice quite jumped, for it had hadn't spoken before. Hold your tongue. As if you ever saw anybody, you keep your head under the leaves and snore away there. Are there any more 
people in the garden besides me? There's one other flower in the garden that can move about like you. Well, she has the same awkward shape as you. But she is redder and her petals are shorter, I think. Her petals are done up close, almost like a dahlia. Not tumbled about anyhow like yours. But that's not your fault. You're beginning to fade, you know. And then one can't help one's petal getting a little untidy. Alice didn't like this idea at all. So, to change the subject, she asked, does she ever come out here? I dare say you'll see her soon. She is one of the thorny kind. Where does she wear the thorns? Why? All around her head, of course. I wasn't wondering you hadn't got some too. I thought it was the regular rule. She's coming. I hear her footsteps. Alice looked ar ar around eagerly and found that it was the Red Queen. She's grown a good deal. When I met her earlier, she was only three inches high. It's the fresh air that does it. Wonderfully fine air it is out here. I think I'll go and meet her. Though the flowers were interesting enough, she felt that it would be far grander to have a talk with a real queen.